Hello and welcome to the November 25th, 2022 edition of Watching the Tape. I hope that everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving yesterday. For the regular viewers of this video series, it's no secret that we run a value biased investment advisory practice here at HFG Trust. So let me quickly recap what I mean by value as opposed to growth. A great example of a value company is Berkshire Hathaway, which trades at a uh, one and a half times price to book value of equity ratio. And a good example of a growth company is Tesla, which trades at over 14 times the value of its, uh, the book value of its equity on its balance sheet. So value companies trade at lower multiples to their book value, which conceivably means that there is uh, less downside in the event that the going gets tough in the stock market, which it has this year. So large cap uh, value companies are actually, as a group, are actually flat on the year when you look at the year-to-date performance. While growth company stocks, as a group, are down a whopping 29% year-to-date. So having a value bias uh, has been nice this year as value has dramatically outperformed growth. Now, don't get me wrong, this has not always been the case. There was quite a stretch when uh, growth companies were, were outperforming in recent years, and, and we value investors counted ourselves among societies marginalized uh, as we kind of stood by and watched high-flying growth stock after high-flying growth stock just skyrocket and defy the laws of gravity. But uh, uh, and there was lots of head scratching during that period. Uh, but those those times seem to be over for now. The landscape is now uh, littered with with growth stocks that have since fallen back to earth. And one such company is Carvana, which is an online retailer of used vehicles. And maybe you've seen these uh, car vending machines on your travels. Its stock price. Uh, shot up in the early days. This goes back to uh, late 2017. And then it has now, well, fallen 98% since its peak uh, about a year and a half ago in the summer of 2021. So what can we learn uh, to help us avoid investing in the next Carvana? And just generally speaking, the Times that are sort of characterized by euphoria can make decision making difficult. And the way that looks in the stock market is that investors look beyond traditional valuation metrics and instead rely on unconventional techniques to value companies that don't yet have an established track record of earnings. And this kind of thing happens over and over throughout history. Now, is it is it always the case that uh, these high flying growth stocks skyrocket to the moon and then come crashing back down to earth, uh, like Carvana and Zoom and Peloton and Rivian Automotive and DocuSign and Teladoc and Beyond Meat? Uh, no, of course not. Not all of them. No, of course not. By the way, all the ones that I just listed there are down 83% or more since their peaks. So back to Carvana. And just quickly, the let's look back at, at what drove this up in the first place. So the investment thesis uh, early on supporting the run-up in the stock price to well over $300. In fact, it peaked at $370 a share. It was based upon Carvana's you know, first mover status in online uh, sales of used vehicles. And, and it also happened to benefit greatly from the COVID-related supply chain disruption in new cars. So the reasons for its decline are that, well, the supply chain for new cars has normalized. And uh, with increased interest rates, auto financing costs are, are going up, which, which hurts 
uh, purchases of used vehicles and used vehicle prices are actually starting to come down a little bit. And, and that's especially bad because Carvana has an inventory of used vehicles that it bought at higher prices. And when those flow through and are sold, that's really gonna put a squeeze on, on, on margins. So let's get to the good part. What did investors have in front of them? What did they have at their fingertips when they bought this stock over you know, a year and a half ago, well over $300 a share? And I have in my hand right here, this is a research note from uh, JP Morgan, and it is dated June of 2021. And in it, JP Morgan moves from an overweight on the stock to uh, a neutral with a price target of $325 a share. And at the time, the price of Carvana was $313 a share. Now I'm not picking on JP Morgan. Uh, many, many Wall Street firms were, were in on this madness. Um, but my favorite part in, in this is looking at the, value, the valuation metrics that are in this report very clearly laid out uh, that show uh, what investors had in front of them when they pulled the trigger and, and bought this stock and, and into the 300s and, and you know anywhere along the line there. Um, and by the way, a couple of months ago, we did uh, we did put together a similar kind of um, analysis, or we put together a video on Beyond Meat that uh, was looking back at what investors were thinking. So this might may seem uh, vaguely uh, familiar to you. All right, so here's what the uh, valuation metrics are that were laid out in this report. So the first line there is your EV to EBITDA multiple. Now this is not something that comes up every day uh, when you're sitting around the dinner table. So EV to EBITDA, it's basically the company value relative to the, the cash flows that the company produces on an annual basis. And let's say you are a, a business owner yourself. If you were to um, go to market and you wanted to sell your company, you might expect a multiple of four to eight times EBITDA. So looking at this, now again, we're looking at future expected EBITDA or earnings. So again, this report was written in 2021, and we're looking at the multiple of that value, that, that company value relative to earnings that haven't happened yet, and were expected to happen this year in 2022. So that's the column we're looking at. And the EV multiple was 155 times uh, EBITDA. All right, so let's move on to uh, a multiple that is uh, more widely followed, and that's that's the PE ratio. A reasonable PE ratio is 15 to 25 times. So when you look over there and you see a PE ratio of nine, nine over 9,000 times, this is pure insanity. This this is uh, absurd. So this may be how venture capital backed firms are are valued. I don't know, but this is not okay for publicly traded companies. So is there a lesson to be learned that we can apply in the future to help us avoid the next Carvana? And I think it's uh, I think it's pretty clear to avoid companies uh, with with no earnings expected in the near term and that trade at obscene multiples of whatever uh, you're gonna use, revenue, uh, earnings, EBITDA, cash flow, whatever it is. Uh, and I, I think it's, it's especially easy in hindsight to look at this and see why this was a company to be avoided. But let's go back to the summer of 2021. Uh, it's, it's not as easy during the, the height of euphoria to resist the, the hot stocks du jour. And um, I, and I want to come back to our own emphasis on on value stocks in our client portfolios. Our boring message was not always well received. So when when the conversation uh, would in inevitably come up, when people find out, you know, what line of business I'm in, it goes. We talk about investments and and the prospect of holding a 
a diversified basket of index funds with a, a tilt towards value companies seemed far less attractive to holding five to 10 sexy high growth stocks that, that were actually doing pretty well for them um, at the time. It was just a, a message that uh, was tough to, to convey with, with uh, any degree of, of success or satisfaction, uh, but that was then. So that's it for, for now. We'll see you in two weeks.